Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, time for us to check out the front pages of our national dailies. As usual, we'd we'll also uh, bring you up to speed with what's making the rounds. We do have a guest who will be joining the discussion, the conversation. Jide Johnson, a chief lecturer of Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Uh, it's good to have you join us, Jide Johnson. It's a pleasure. Good morning. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. All right, so uh, I'll start off with the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Uh, let's find out what the Daily Trust got to, uh, has to report this morning on the dailies. Uh, looking at the front page of the Daily Trust, you have Despite Poor Funding, Buhari Crate 30 More Tertiary Institutions. Uh, that's the bold caption on the Daily Trust newspaper. You have Polytechnics Becoming Mere Constituency Projects. Uh, that's what Asu is quoted to say. Expert wants existing institutions revamped. Presidency, ministry, moon. That's what you find. This arises underneath the board caption. All of that you find on page five of the Daily Trust newspaper. FIRS to go after tax evaders in maritime aviation sectors. That's what you find also another header this morning. ICPC recovers 241 houses from public servant. Uh, ICPC recovers 241 houses from public servant. That's also another caption on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Hundreds flee homes as ESWAP attacks Bornu Town again. And you have Ganduje proposes 196.3 billion naira budget for 2022. Gandhi proposes 196.3 billion naira budget for 2022. And troops killed terrorists making explosives from fertilizers. Uh, that's another caption this morning on the Daily Trust, and that's on page four. PDP convention hangs as court rules on seconders suits today. Uh, so, of course, you know that uh, the hearing was suspended and hopefully by 12 or thereabout, we definitely hear the ruling on that particular case. But that's it on the Daily Trust newspaper. Let's quickly check out the Daily Independent uh, newspaper as well. Now on the front page, it has a caption saying, National Convention, apprehension grows in PDP over appeal court verdict. Apprehension grows in PDP over appeal court verdict. Parties appeal committee submits report. Our convention will shut down APC. Uh, find out who's saying all of that when you pick up a copy of the Daily Independent newspaper. Uh, you also have a caption saying Facebook changes company names to Meta. Uh, that's what you find. And 2022 budget. NAS will ensure defense security gets highest vote. That's what Senate President is quoted to say on page uh, 7. FIRS plans to tax audit on operators in maritime aviation sectors. And you also have how ICPC recovered 241 houses from public offices. Agency boss fingers FCDA staff in housing fraud by estate developers in the FCT says public officials use uh, real estate investment for money laundering. Uh, that's what you also find uh, this morning on the Daily Independent. Let's see if we can check out another headline uh, before we move away from the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Security operatives foil jailbreak at the Benin Central Correctional Center. And that's on page 29. That's it on the Daily Independent. Away from that, let's check out. Uh, we also have the Punch newspaper this morning. Secondo suits ruling. Uncertainty reigns as 3,600 delegates arrive in Abuja for PDP convention. Apparently, the issue of uh, you know direct and indirect primaries will still be a strong conversation, and that's on page two. You have only PDP chairman has right to supervise uh, the convention. PDP convention on track. APC uh, collapse imminent. Uh, find out who's saying all of that. Away from that, you also find twenty-one billion narrow 
14 bed Asso Rock Clinics construction begins in November. Uh, that's on page eight. Another caption says, government workers feature shaky as 20 states shun contributory pension scheme. Nigeria tops chart as 11 African countries block airlines $700 million revenue. Uh, that's on page 25 of the Patch newspaper. Now, you still have interesting headlines here. Let's see if we can check one or two uh, before we move away. Tamberwell orders visit Mimiko, ex-governor, set to rejoin the PDP. So it might just also be a period of defection uh, between the two uh, dominating political parties in Nigeria. Facebook changes name to Meta and promotes apps and technology under new firm. Uh, that's also another header you find this morning on uh, the front page of the Pouch newspaper. Suspected cultists caught with pistol in Ogun school during exams. Uh, that's it also. And Lai Mohammed lied. He funded 2019 Kwara APC elections. Uh, secretaries quoted. And that's on page 14 of uh, the Pouch newspaper. Now you also have the Anambra decides on the top, uh, you know, front page of the page. And he says, PFN folds IPOPs no election call. Agitators downplay poll. Personnel in four states on standby for reinforcement. And you have the NSCDC quoted on page 14 and page 8 of the Punch newspaper. Well, that's the much we can take on the Punch. We move away now and check out the Nation newspaper this morning. Uh, just before we have G.D. Johnson share his thoughts on uh, some of the headlines uh, making the round. Now, on the front page of the Nation newspaper, you have... Uh, PDP governors, elders head for showdown over in Yola. Uh, that's on uh, the board caption. You find Anambra 2021, INEX spending more than before, says Okoye. IG, why we're deploying massively. And IPOP has not called for polls, uh, boycotts. <laughs> okay, that's very tricky, uh, but that's on page 27. Please query, carry on panels finding. Uh, that's what you also find on uh, the front page of the nation. It's on page three to be precise. ICPC recovers 311 houses from two civil servants. Oh, wow. So you, you probably might just be having different figures. Uh, some quarters will say about 400, and you also have report of 301. But I'm sure you will definitely find out more information if you uh, flip through the pages of our national dealers. Government winning war against Boko Haram bandit showing card to government travel forms Kimbasom. Uh, that's what you find. Government winning war against Boko Haram and bandits and showing card to government travel forms Kimbasom. I'm sure you want to find out what that's all about on page uh, three on two of the Nation newspaper this morning. Deductions from state allocation on hold for noun. That's on page four of the Nation newspaper. And you have um, Fire Me takes 100.8 billion naira budget to assembly uh, for Asogun State, 6, 13 billion naira to fix or tie roads. Uh, that's what you find as well on the Nation newspaper. Well, that's the much we can take on the front pages of the National Dailies. I also ask that beyond the headlines, it's okay to read, uh, flip through the pages so you have the gist of all of the stories. But we start off with the, uh, we just go straight to understanding some of the headlines this morning. And G.D. Johnson is on standby. Good morning, G.D. Johnson. Thank you once again for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for always on. Good morning once again to our viewers all over the world. Um, Let's start with the education story, which was a major headline in the Daily Trust, that despite of funding, very great starting more tertiary institutions. Uh, we're just creating the tertiary institutions based on what some like to read and I did that by as assumption that that's not the consequence project. But we create this 
institutions based on needs assessment and what's the goal, what's the vision, what's the what's what's the need behind the creation of this this institution? That's the question. The existing institution are they properly funded? Are we giving them the required infrastructure, both the required resources, both human and capital resources that is required for them? And then what's the goal of our educational system? Um, do we have do we have an overview of how many doctors we need in the next 20 years, how many nurses do we need in the next 20 years, how many engineers are we going to require in the next 20 years, how many architects are we going to require in the next 20 years, and do we design and fashion our educational policies around around that template, or we just establish a different institution like University of Transport in Daura, um, that uh, the Ministry of Transport and Chinese government Established the Maritime University that they have not come to conclusion on where to locate it in, in, in Delta State. So, for me, the goal of um, creating an educational institution will be defeated if there is no national policy or goal with respect to what you want to achieve when it comes to so that we can direct so that can, there can be an integration between our primary education, secondary education, and university education. Say, so for instance, in the, say, for instance, in the next 50 years, we'll be needing 2 million doctors. What do you do? You provide, you, you provide incentives to encourage people to go into medical practice, probably through loans, through, through loans, through educational loans, through scholarship and the rest of it. That's how civilized climate, that's how they design their educational, educational policy. But I do want to score cheap political points. A student of mine um, was around, former student of mine, was around la, la, this week and we were talking about the educational and, so, and she spoke about inadequate space for students now that the secondary school she attended um, that was only one school in that same space in that same compound they have four secondary schools there and i shared my own experience that the secondary school i attended uh, is the same thing and you, you the spaces are limited but because they want to write it as part of their goals that we have created social number of schools, they don't look at the environment, the structure, what benefit will it be to the development, mental, physical, and emotional development of the students. And here we are, we are, we are producing half big graduates, graduates that cannot compete with their contemporary uh, all, over, all over the world. But once they leave our system and they go to another system, they begin to excel. I will ask yourself the question. So it's the type of environment which you put in place for me, it's a political statement for them to create those institutions. You now have heads of those institutions, you have registrar, you have administrative staff, you have different it's duplication and duplication leads to wastages. If it's not even duplication, it's multiplication of 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 of, of institutions. You create you create empires for yourself. God will help us in Nigeria in Jesus' name, but it will, it will not come down to come and help us until we have ourselves. Um, the second story I'm interested in is the story of FIRS. Okay, but, but before you, but, but G.D. Johnson, uh, just as a follow-up, just before you get to the next uh, story of uh, tax evasion, uh, why do we have, you know, we seem to have more conventional universities. One will think that at this point where we are as a country, there will be need for creation of more vocational, you know, and um, technical institutions or, you know, colleges so that uh, we can actually, you know, solve some of the needs and some of the issues. I mean, just recently, we heard that, you know, the, the Federal Ministry of Health is planning to borrow uh, over about 200 million naira for mosquito nets. And if we have uh, more vocational institutions, then, you know, some of those needs and concern, we probably might solve it. So my question is, why are we not bent on creating vocational rather than conventional universities? Yeah, because because the way we, we, we are much more interested in certificate. This is this is society whereby you have people that became professor without having a second degree, and people that became professor without having masters. They only became professors through their first degree and whatever they've done in their career development. Coming up with law, coming up with policies that after they've enjoyed the policy, after they've enjoyed that, that you, you cannot become a professor until. You have PhD until you have this, until you have that, until you have that. So we, we don't have respect for those vocational schools, the technical schools, you know. And in between Yaba Tech and Unilag, you have the Federal Technical College in Yaba. Once you just passed through, we used to, while I was in Unilag, we used to pass through that 
access to go to from Fadi to go to Yuna. So those technical school, my elder brother attended that technical school before he went for that. So those technical schools, we have no basis for it. And that's why we, we import artisans. If you are involved in, in, in building, you discover that the best tiler, the best bricklayer, they are from neighboring countries here. You don't know, we don't, we no longer have them. I grew up in what I was cut as. I knew what those artisans, you do, you do what I works with, used to be fixed by workers, workers from water corporation then. They will fix the road. They will fix everything because you have this technical support. But now those technical education, and that's the essence of 634 that the professor Baspapua brought into focus. Okay, you know what? You do six six years in primary education, then you do three years in secondary education. Uh, if you can't proceed further, then you go to technical education. If you proceed further, you, but what has happened to that policy? So everybody wants to go to university. Everybody wants to go to polytechnic, even if you go to polytechnic, the discrimination that oh, you attended polytechnic, oh, this one attended university, and the rest of it, I can say, without faith, it's happening around in any profession where you have, where people practice. Those that go to polytechnic are better than university students, and I stand to, I stand to correct that. All you just need to do is do your evaluation concerning internship. And internship, that one, that one did a study with Professor Kogi of, um, University, former of University of Lagos and um, Coral State University, which was part of they did a study and they discovered that polytechnic students were doing better than university students when it comes to mass communication when they interviewed that. So basically, it's the way our society is structured. The way our society is structured, we place more emphasis on university education because of that certification. As a result of that, nobody wants to send his or her work to technical education. Now we came up with entrepreneur, entrepreneur development studies in schools that students should learn entrepreneur development. Now you find a situation where someone that has graduated, after he or she has graduated, is not going to tailoring, is not going to fashion design, is not going to barbering. Why should that person not have gone to technical education and develop that skill, develop that vocational skill, and will be a better person rather than waste his time in the university system? When he was quite right that he's going to end up pursuing his own his own vocation, he's going to be an entrepreneur in his own in his own his own zone. So it's the way the society is structured. What place do we have for those technical education? And you have a situation whereby you see people that went to technical education in civilized in civilized class in Germany, in US, and they'll bring them to Nigeria to come and help Nigerian engineers and they will call them expatriates. Whereas and you see them in even in the railway projects they are doing, ask anyone that is involved in all of these Chinese sponsored project that we got loan from. The people that they brought from China, they were not university graduates, they were just technicians. And those technicians will be loading over our own engineers here in Nigeria because our own engineers don't have the technical ability. And because we have thrown away the technical ability as a result of that, <coughs> we, we now have to import those type of skills and those type of labor from, from Benin Republic, from Togo, from what have you. If I'm involved in, 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 in the building sector in Nigeria, you know what I'm talking about. Hmm. That's all right. Okay, so uh, let's also uh, share your thoughts on this uh, particular issue, the one you also interested in, uh, that FIRS to go after tax evaders in maritime aviation sectors. Well, um, it's, the, it's, it's just sad that they are just thinking of going after them. If you know the resources that come um, from those sector, for example, if you travel by air, no, they collect different form of taxation from you. One thousand naira for this. Then you imagine where is this money going to? I've always asked this question. If you if you are going to the international airport, the toll at the international airport, that toll before you cross over to the international, who is responsible for collecting that toll? What do they use the resources for that toll for? How do they audit the money they collect from that toll? Which agency is it NCE that is collecting the toll or is Federal Inland Revenue Services? So and then when you go to the when you go to the maritime sector, the type of resources that is there that we are not paying attention to. Most society are run that not even have petroleum products are run through taxation. But we have a lot of loopholes. The only taxes we collect regularly in Nigeria is as you are, is the income tax, which is just a basic way of, of getting your revenue. All those excise GDP, all those duties that you get from the aviation and maritime sector, FRI is not just telling us I want to go, want to go after them. Where God will help them to go 
to go after it and to get the resources that you require to run this country. If we really collect our taxes, government in Nigeria does not need, does not have any need to borrow money from anywhere because the revenue items are dead. However, do we collect those revenues from the people that we are supposed to collect the revenue for? Or do we give exemptions to people that we ought not to give exemptions to? So these are the issues when it comes to taxation in Nigeria. Because um, what, is, what is the natural resources that Britain has? So many countries in the world don't have natural resources, but they get their revenue from taxes. And if we look by our population and by our consumption pattern, we should be borrowing money from, from China. But because we are lazy as a nation and we don't have the political will, if you go to the aviation sector, you see that a lot of people enjoy, and the maritime sector, a lot of people enjoy exemptions. They will just get one letter from one public or government official and they give them different types of waiver. The country cannot run abusing principles. You must uphold the principle. The principle of taxation is everybody must pay what is due to him or her. So in, in, in other times, every nation from a from tax, tax evasion, they from at it, and, but here you can go with it. God will help um, um, them to, 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 to collect, to be able to collect revenue which is required so that we don't incur debt for unborn children through the various loans, and these through the unjustifiable loans that this present administration has collected on behalf of you and I and our children and our unborn great grandchildren and great grandchildren. It takes me to the story of the ICPC. Well, different headlines from different different figures from different newspapers that them um, they recovered. Let's just assume. Let's use the law of average. One set to one and uh, 41, the other said 311. Um, so let's use the law of average. Let's say 270, 270 houses were recovered from just two civil servant. Two civil servant houses. So two individuals have close to 270 houses. What ICP should have done is to have investigated the entire body. That Those two cannot be the only two that is involved in that scam. Who are others that are involved? And I've said that if actually we want to really fight corruption, we must look at the lifestyle of the civil servants. Because they, if, 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 if you have ever been in politics or you have ever been in public service, if the political class steals 40% um, of the revenue, 60% of the revenue goes to, goes to the civil service. Ask anybody that has ever been in government. At the local government level, at the state level, at, at the federal level, the enablers. Uh, when people are talking about the furniture allowance of the, of the Senate, I've said it on here. I said, why, have you ever asked about the furniture allowance or the allowances of permanent secretary? That an average permanent secretary in Nigeria is richer than the Senator of the Federal Report. And I started to be controverted. You know their salary, but look at their lifestyle. Their children are not even permanent secretary in, in state civil service. Their children, we have them as friends. Their children are not attending schools in Nigeria. They don't attend schools in Nigeria. They live in poor areas. You look, at, you look at they attend churches with you and I. Look at the types of cars they drive. So if we really want to fight corruption, the focus has always been on the political class. But the real enablers of corruption in Nigeria are the civil servants. And if you don't fight that fight, we can never win the war on corruption. If you don't have, in actual sense, the civil service was not created to serve the people. The, 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 the colonial administration created the civil service to fund the colonial government. That's, that's the structure. So one of the areas that we need to restructure is our civil service system. And if you recall, one of the major things that um, the Mutala administration did, I remember, I can tell you without fear, I was living in it, what I was. A lot of top civil servants took their car, they were driving, they took it out of Iju Water Works. They went and hide it. As a young boy, I knew. They went and hide those cars. Because if you are caught with a car that cannot match your lifestyle, you will explain. And that's the, that's the decisive steps. So when people say they want to fight corruption, and we have not dealt with the civil servants, I, I laughed, I laughed, I laughed about it. You could see it's just two civil servants that are involved in this ITPC. ITPC 271 houses. If you come to Lagos Pond, we don't know how many houses. We have seen permanent secretaries that in, of lands in Lagos. We have seen how many properties they own. So, but how but, is how is this corruption? Uh, you know, 
going on in the civil service? You know, wh which means how do they get to acquire all of these? How do they get to have all of these funds that you, if you look at, like you have rightly mentioned, comparing that to what they earn as salary, um, where are they getting it from? How, what, what corners are this, uh, you know, it, lacuna created? You, you, call them, you, you call them the technocrats. They have, they have the inside knowledge. They are the, the, they are the workforce of public service. So they don't they know where the money is. They know where the money is. Can you compare someone that has been in civil service for 25 years and you're just electing a House of Rep member or you're electing a governor that has never been in civil service to come into a civil service? The permanent secretary in governor's office knows where the budget head is, know where the money is, know where, where, what to spend and what to spend. Or let me give you an example. You come to the local government. The council manager knows you have elected you have elected the chairman. For example, there's something going on in Lagos today, and I've shared it with some of my colleagues that are very close to those of them that control the affairs of Lagos. I said they've successfully destroyed the local government in Lagos State. You've done an election for more than three months. You have not instituted the, state, the local government executive council. You only have the, it's only the chairman and the and the vice chairman and the civil service that are running the local government. Now the supervisory councillors and the council secretary, SLG, that you join the chairman in running the local government, you have not instituted them, you have not considered the, the, the local government except council. So the chairman, just imagine the chairman and the vice chairman with the council manager, with the treasurer, and with various heads of the department. They have been in the local government even before the chairman thought of becoming chairman, number one. In most cases, some of these chairmen do not even have the technical know-how. They don't have the professional. They don't have the administrative knowledge to run even a small business. Now to talk of running a government, a government that has a lot of businesses, and you bring such ignoramus into public service, they will be tossed around by the civil servants who are better educated, who are more knowledgeable, and it's very clear. I'm sorry I'm using this, um, this illustration, but... Um, one of the foremost writers in ancient times, Paul, is called Paul in the Christian, is in the Christian faith, said, as long as the heir is still a child, his, his world is not more than a slave because he's subjected to control. So in most cases, we find, we find people that are not knowledgeable in public governance, and you have people in civil service that are more knowledgeable, more educated, more exposed. Mm. And what do you have? They toss them left, right, and center. And I can say this without a fail. I have friends as civil servants. I have friends. I have, I have, I have uncles that have been in civil service. If we don't take the corruption fight to the civil service, we can never win it. You can't win the war of corruption. You can't. It's impossible. How would you win it? And yet we focus more on 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 the political class. Fine, the political class. It actually says if you look at the ratio, it's seventy to thirty percent. I'm telling you. For a fact, an average permanent secretary in the federal ministry is richer than a minister, and is richer than 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 than, than the senator of the federal republic. They count the number of permanent secretaries that you have. Let, let, let's move you away from that because be, because I know that this conversation is almost endless, and I'm thinking to myself if. Uh, you know, because of the time that they have to spend in the service, uh, therefore, with all of the experiences and all of the knowledge, uh, would it therefore mean that we should reduce the time so that, uh, you know, they don't get to have all of that? But that would be a conversation we for another them, day. We, we should hold them accountable. You don't reduce time, hold them accountable. You can't live a lifestyle. And look at, all you need to do is to look at where they live. Okay, let's check out, let's move away from that, Ms. G.D. Johnson. Let's look at um, Daily Independent. Now, uh, National Convention, I heard of the PDP National Convention, uh, there seemed to be an, uh, a lot of app or apprehension in PDP over the appeals court verdict. So yes, we're hoping to get that verdict today. And also, uh, that, that's on the Daily Independent. Let's also check out what the, uh, the Punch newspaper is saying. Uh, that. Um, the punch and the daily independent almost uh, you know very similar with your story all the major newspaper the nation the punch and daily trust daily independent all reported the issues because the major issue now um, for, for, for the punch the uh, i think the court should not stop the convention of any political party i think the courts should not stop and that's my view it's like asking the court to stop an election 
The convention of any political party is how to institute and the various, uh, the national convention, for example, is to put in place the national leadership of the party. And I think um, moving judgment towards, well, the political class are not really helping themselves. Um, and you've seen that over time. And this will not be the last. You still see it to be a recurrent, a recurrent, um, a recurrent feature. I think the cause to help this democracy to grow. And how do they help this democracy to grow? In the administration of justice and dispensation of justice, we should there should be a timeline. A timeline in which that issues relating to this should be treated with a dispatch. And that's why some have advocated that well, probably we should have a court to settle political issues. And then we know that court is designed specifically to address because if you see oh, if you see the number of candidates that have won election without contesting election and you have seen the number of candidates that won election that were not sworn in as a result of uh, um, litigation arising from party primaries party issues pre-election matters it's it's, it's it's alarming and that's why some have advocated that probably you should have the court to look into this matter why would the national chairman of a party that has enjoyed the leadership of the party, go to court to stop the convention of his party. I think sometimes individuals should understand that um, the national interest and the party interest is bigger than is bigger than their interest. I love what Adam Soshimole said. He said he could have gone to court to challenge the um, the um, institution of Katika Committee for the APC, APC headed by Mala, my Malabunu, the governor of Yobe State, who was sworn in in the State House of Federal Republic of Nigeria by the Attorney General of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That itself is a religious, that itself is an impeachable crime. And that is said is something which the uh, national, uh, the, um, the body of what, uh, I, I remember the names of those that are what the son, that they should have taken away his son from him because that's, that's a sacrilegious. The, the chief law officer of the nation should not be the chief law officer. So, but others in Shabele did not challenge because it felt that, well, my, the, the interest of the party is larger than mine. And, and that's the way that I should think that seconders should have, should have looked at this matter. But we wait for the court to rule um, whether they should hold the convention or they should not hold the convention. Um, for me, the courts, those matters, the courts should treat it with a, with a dispatch. But in, in any case, um, Sometimes the national chairman of the PDP have always been their, their major problem. You recall the experience which they have with um, uh, Modu Ali, uh, Senator Modu Ali Sheriff um, when he, from the way he emerged as the national chairman of the party. Now, the same, the same character is positioning himself to become the APC national chairman. Well, in any case, there's no difference between PDP and APC. It's just that the name that is different, but in character, in nature, and in 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 actions, they are the same. They are the same. They are birds of the same feather. They are just chameleonic. The deceived Nigerian telling them, telling us that they are APC or they are PDP. They are the same because if you look at their actions and their character, it is the same. I hope that the court will rule today and PDP can go ahead with them um, with this convention. We need a stable party system for us to have a stable polity. Now, if you don't have a stable party system, the parties are, are chaotic. When they get to government, you have a chaotic uh, government, and that's and that's why we have seen chaos across across our political spectrum. Because the two political parties that are major parties in Nigeria can't even put their house in order. Ordinary primaries they cannot conduct. If they, if a party cannot manage its affairs, how can you manage the affairs of the country? A party cannot manage its affairs. And you are not given the responsibility of managing the country to it. Now we have an arrangement in APC where APC is running under the Katika committee. If anybody should go to court, whatever decisions they take concerning their Katika arrangement, which is an illegality, which is an infringement on the concern of the party, it's, it's just a waste of time. I hope PDP will be able to put this house in order, moving towards 2023, and then we can provide a viable opposition. Because in democracy, you need the opposition to be vibrant. You need the opposition to provide an alternative viewpoint. An alternative point to existing point of view being proposed by by the by by the by the ruling party, but we have not seen that consistent alternative viewpoint. And every one of us has have, have been living with one alternative viewpoint. But the greatest power that God gave to mankind is the power of choice. The power of choice, and PDP has not provided us 
has not prov has not provided us with that with that alternative because it has been a chaotic um, party structure since um, 2015. Prior to 2015, when members begin to leave the party to go to APC, governors leaving the party to go to APC prior to 2015, and we have seen the situation since post 2019, 2019 election, the governor of um, and the governors of Ebony State, and the governor of Zamfara State, and some other actors and players, National Assembly members, members of Board of Trustees of PDP have left PDP to go to, to the APC. So, okay, uh, they put there. All right, uh, let's just move away uh, from that and stay still staying with the uh, Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, this sounds like good news as Asa Rock Clinic might just, uh, you know, might just begin to experience construction for Asso Rock Clinic in November. Uh, sounds like a good thing. I remember the time where, you know, all of that issue of not having a syringe was raised and the fact that this constant for medical uh, tourism uh, in, you know, our country. Uh, for me, it sounds like good news, but I'd like to share your thoughts on that. Well, I think that what Asso Rock Clinic, what, for me, what we should have is to put one of our teaching, some of our teaching hospitals or one of the military facilities. This is the military medical facilities that you use to, to treat the president because it's, it's a highly, highly sensitive. It's national security. So what, instead of investing in National Rock Clinic, I think that what you, the various military hospitals that we have needs to be strengthened, needs to be fortified. Uh, is it National Rock Clinic? It's 14 bed. 14 bed as well clean. and look at the money that has been voted for it. I think what we should look at is the various um, um, military hospitals that we have. Fortify this military hospital, equip this military hospital. That's where you should treat the commander in chief of the armed forces or anyone occupying that office of the president or sensitive position in Nigeria. You can't just treat them in Azor. Well. If you are treating them in Azor, well, uh, uh, in, 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 in Azor, well, but you have to deploy different types of security a corridor. You have to create a, a perimeter around that clinic anytime the president goes to the clinic. And then you have you affect you affect the normal flow of government, government, government functions and government services. I think we should move away from that direction. But the Azura Clinic, hopefully it will come in. They will they will spend this money that has been budgeted for it because every year budgetary allocations have been made for the clinic and they said the clinic will start. In. Hopefully, if they put this clinic in place, I hope the president will not be traveling abroad to receive their medical medical attention. God will help Nigeria when it comes to that. Mm. Um, as rock, as rock clinic. All right, uh, this is what we have to anchor. Thank you so much, GD Johnson. For yeah, let, okay. Oh, I thought we could just add them. Um, well, okay, right, okay. Go, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. Just go ahead. Uh, uh, before. Well, there is the story of 2022 budget where the NAS said that they were unsure that defense and security gets um that's Elijah. coming from the senate president since since i was since i was young you can even see from my bed now i am old i've never seen any 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 get um, higher allocation than security and budget i've never seen anywhere where security vote has been explained by any governor or by any president the more money we are budgeted for security, the less secure we have become in Nigeria. And I saw a story where they said oh, we are winning war against bandits and and Boko Haram. Wonderful. The more money we have allocated to security, the more it be, the more insecure we have become in this country. And I've challenged the president. I've challenged the Senate president. I've challenged the speaker. The speaker is from Sule. Is from Lagos State, my state. I challenge the speaker to travel from Abuja to Lagos, not fly, to travel from Abuja to Lagos. And I challenge the the Senate president, who is from Yobe, to travel from 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 Abuja to Yobe without the security details and to have an experience, a first-hand experience of what an average Nigerian goes through traveling throughout the length and breadth of this country. Traveling to the, throughout the length and breadth of this country. And for them to understand that Nigeria, security of lives and property, how secure lives and property are in Nigeria. 
So these people play to Galilee. They are far away from reality. You know what? Okay. All right. Uh, many thanks for being part of the conversation this morning. G.D. Johnson, we do appreciate your time. And uh, we hope that we have more time, uh, you know, in the next week, you know, to talk about some of this issue. Once again, thank you for joining us. We'll quickly step on the brakes. When we return, we will continue with uh, the program. Please stick around.